it's a love story. It's a story of war. It's a story of a woman's ambition and a woman's determination to live her life to the full. Mm -hmm. Because it's set in the medieval period, she, she has to marry. And it happens that she falls in love with the King of England and he falls passionately in love with her. And how they manage to make the England that they want and how they manage to make these beautiful children that they want is really the drama of the story because they face very intense enemies, family enemies and personal enemies, as well as the whole difficulty of trying to make the England really that we know today, a peaceful settlement mm -hmm. out of a, a kingdom at war. Yeah, it was a hugely turbulent period in history. And for me, it was a sort of story of survival. On top of the romance, uh, everyone trying to survive, everyone trying to clamber their way to the top. Well, in terms of the approach, I don't think the approach is different from anything else. You have to uh, know the world you're getting involved in, understand the history and the politics involved. Um, but for me, it was the complexity of this world and the, and the pace of life. and. The rules of uh, the rules of war, both politically and in terms of warfare, yeah, how they were different to how they are today. When my brother George uh, tried to have me taken off the throne and, and to take my place, and we did a scene where uh, he basically comes back to, to court with his head bowed to me, you know, and I basically say, "All's fair in love and war," which is a very odd thing when someone's essentially tried to kick you off your own throne. Uh, and you know, do worse. And it was just a d different set of rules that applied, um, and that were taken for granted in the court. Uh, yeah, just took a little getting used to. I think it. I think people will be very excited to see this particular period in history told from a woman's point of view. I think I can't think of anything that's done that before. Uh, and such a rich period in history, and not many people know, I certainly didn't know much about this period in history. Um, and I think it's got something to say about the world we live in today and the, the political landscape of the world we live in today. Uh, but, you know, on a simpler level, it's got a bit of romance, it's got a bit of action, it's got something for a lot of people, I think. Uh, mm. And Max is too modest to say, but it's a beautifully filmed production. It's visually mm. incredibly rich. It, it's And the cast, are Fantastic lovely in it. Yeah. You know, Max plays a king of England and he is every inch a prince. It's wonderful. I think there's something about when you're in an uncertain time, it's nice to look back at times where it, certainly they were very uncertain, but at least you know the ending. You know who the winners are, you know who to back, as it were, all the way through. But I think uh, for me, you know, having been a historian, having trained as a historian, what became interesting to me was to see the change of history, that the way that history is told as almost a science, that it became a story about aspiration, it became a story about women, it became a story about working people, it became a story about black people. Mm -hmm. And so you have, in a sense, an underdog's history, a history of people who have not been represented in the historical record. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that this drama does is it looks at women that most people will never even have heard of but at the time they were really, really powerful actors on their own behalf. I think in general, we're now in a society which is prepared to listen uh, to women's stories and that we now have, because of the research of the last 40 years, we now have stories that we can be sure are historically relevant and are historically accurate that women and men historians can tell. And so in a sense, what television then does is takes these stories and dramatizes them. I think it's still a theater uh, in, a, in which people who are keen on the royal family, in a sense, project their hopes and their mm. So, you know, there, there's a new royal baby coming and, and people feel very moved by that and people like a royal wedding. Um, equally, when it all goes horribly wrong, people have a really disgusting joy in the fact that here's a highly privileged wealthy family for whom things also go wrong. So I think in a sense, increasingly, it's, it's more about celebrity. The period that we're talking about in the drama, people thought that the royals were related to God. Mm -hmm. They thought they were exceptional. Not in a not in a not in a metaphysical way, not in a, an unreal way. They really thought that the king was closer to God than they were, and, mm. and stood just below the angels. And that 
gave the king enormous authority and enormous power if he could retain his crown, which is why it becomes so key yeah. um, that, that he keeps his power. Mm -hmm.